Welcome to the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. A show all about reviewing dinosaurs on a scale of 1 to 10 fossils before only the elite terrible lizards make it into the prehistoric cage match. This program is presented by the Stomp Tromp Roar Company and can be heard within all the rock layers across the planet. Grab your dinosaurs and your official scorecard because it's now time to dig for dinosaurs. Here's your Mesozoic host, Dinosaur Ranger Anthony. Welcome back, Dinosaur Detectives. You've entered the fossil lab of the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. Now, this is your lead detective and your top-notch host, Dinosaur Ranger Anthony. Now, today's podcast is a mystery of sorts, and it also happens to be the premiere episode of season number four of the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. I can't believe we're already on to episode number 31. And the species, they've just been racking up so quickly throughout my podcast journey. Now today's episode will be broken up into two sections. The first section will be the official review of today's species, while the second section will be what I like to call the dinosaur detective. But what is the dinosaur detective? Well today's dinosaur species is named the Nanotyrannus, and it's somewhat of a mystery within the world of paleontology. Some people, including most paleontologists, believe the Nanotyrannus is simply a juvenile or a young T-Rex, while some other people think it's its own genus and species. Now today I will lay out all the clues and help you decide if the Nanotyrannus is simply just a juvenile or a young T-Rex, or if it is its own genus and species called the Nanotyrannus. Now let's update you guys on some Dinopreneur news before we get started today. Did you hear about Camp Stomp Chomp Roar? This summer, I will be leading a virtual summer camp all about dinosaurs, fossils, Jurassic Park, and so much more. My virtual camp will ha- include three Zoom lessons and a couple of at-home activities that you can do on the Zoom off days. Now, all you need to do in order to become a camper as part of Camp Stomp Chomp Roar is join our Patreon club. Campers must be signed up as a fossil hunter or raptor pack member by June 25th and remain a member during the month of July so they can take advantage of Camp Stomp Chomp Roar. Now, for more information, you can visit my website at www.stompchomproar.com slash summer camp. Now, if you sign up this week, you can take advantage of the second virtual lesson for the month of May. This Zoom lesson will be on May 29th, and it will be all about the Dilophosaurus and the origins of Jurassic Park. This lesson is going to be just 12 days before the premiere of Jurassic World Dominion, where, will we, where we will see the return of the Dilophosaurus, who we haven't seen since the original Jurassic Park movie. Now, during my virtual lesson, I'll I'll also talk about the origins or the background of Jurassic Park. How did Dr. John Hammond get Jurassic Park onto the island of Isla Nublar? You ain't going to want to miss this virtual lesson. It is on May 29th. Now, a couple quick shout-outs, everybody. Shout-out to Primrose School of West Maple. Shout-out to King of Kings Child Care. And shout-out to Sprouts Learning Center Preschool. I've had tons of fun over this last week visiting all your daycare centers, all your child cares, and entertaining and educating all your kiddos about prehistoric life, dinosaurs, Ice Age mammals, feeding paleo our baby Spinosaurus, and even exploding our volcano a time or two. Now, also, happy fifth birthday to Dylan. We went and visited his birthday a couple weeks ago and had a Triassic birthday party. We fed Paleo or Spinosaurus. We played a multitude of dinosaur-related games, and we even exploded our two-foot-tall raptor rock volcano. Now, also, happy 13th birthday to Junior Dinosaur Ranger Cecilia. She just so happens to be my daughter, too, and I, now, you guys, I've got a teenager on my hands. I'm going to need some help because I think I might just have 
a Nano Tyrannus. Now, you guys, that is a perfect segue into our review today. Let's go ahead and grab our gear, grab our scorecard, and our favorite Scooby snack because it's time for our next review. And our review today on the Nano Tyrannus, we will do the review as if it was 100% its very own species. So let me go ahead and grab my scorecard up here really quick. Remember, you guys can print off these scorecards on my website, stompchomproar.com. Click on the Science Lab tab, and you'll be able to see the post for the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast, and you can print off for free the PDF file of the Dinosaur Review for Kids scorecard. So there we go, we've got our scorecard pulled up. Today's species is the Nano Tyrannus. Now, what does this name mean, Nano Tyrannus? It seems kind of similar to Tyrannosaurus Rex, right? And that's because it's another tyrant. So Nano Tyrannus means small or dwarf tyrant. Tyrannosaurus Rex means Tyrant Lizard King. So the names are a little bit similar. Nano Tyrannus, small dwarf tyrant. Now, what is the dinosaur order of our Nanotyrannus? The Nanotyrannus is a Cerisian dinosaur, so it's a lizard-hipped dinosaur. Then it falls into that theropod suborder. Those are the bipedal carnivores. So they're walking on two legs and they're eating all kinds of meat. And then it falls into the Tyrannosaurids family. So Nanotyrannus still is in the family of the Tyrannosaurus rex. It is a Tyrannosaurid. Now, how big was this dinosaur? Its length, its height, its weight? Well, the Nanotyrannus is coming in up to 17 feet long, or 5.2 meters, up to 6 feet high, or 2 meters, and weighing up to 1 ton, or 2,000 pounds. So this is a very small, to maybe even a very small, medium-sized theropod dinosaur. Remember, theropods walking on two legs and eating meat so it's a very small medium-sized dinosaur up to 17 feet long six feet high and weighing in at just 2,000 pounds now how fast was the nano tyrannus they have this one clocking in at about 18 miles per hour on that bipedal stance walking and running on those two powerful legs now what weapons or defense did the nano tyrannus have what are some of its characteristics well nano tyrannus as you guessed it is very T-Rex-like. It is very similar to a Tyrannosaurus Rex. So this one, its skull is only about 22 inches in length, and it has up to 62 sharp serrated teeth. Now these teeth are a lot smaller than T-Rex tooth. They're only about an uh, inch and a half long for our longest Nano Tyrannus teeth. Their skull, 22 inches long, just under two feet long, and then about 62 of those sharp serrated teeth. Now Nano Tyrannus has great eagle-like vision, great depth perception, probably a good sense of smell, so they've got all the great characteristics for a good hunter. Being able to see long distances in the valley or in the in the bush, in the grasslands, over the bedrock. Great sense of smell to be able to sense out any of those, uh, any of their prey in the distance. They have got a very powerful body. They got two strong legs and a long tail behind them for stability. Now their arms, they've got large arms for their size. They're only up to 17 feet long and 6 feet high, but their arms are the size of adult T-Rexes. So their arms are quite a lot bigger than most theropods we'd see for their size. Now, do these ones have feathers or run in packs? Nano Tyrannus, we don't have any direct evidence that they had feathers or lived in a pack system, but they're small theropods, so they probably somewhat would have had some kind of feathers in their youth, possibly, maybe when they were hatching out of their eggs, or maybe they ran in some some kind of pack system. We see other Tyrannosaurid family members leave trace fossils, which those are like their footprints up in Canada. So seeing those trace fossils of footprints running together from other Tyrannosaurid family members can only tell us that maybe the Nano Tyrannus itself was in some kind of a pack system. Now, where did the Nano Tyrannus live and how long did this species live during the Mesozoic era? Well, Nano Tyrannus is coming in at 72 to 65 
million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. And they find the Nanotyrannus in the state of Montana within the United States of North America. Now the skull was found in 1942 by David Dunkel. And that's the same person that Dunkelosius is named after. Dunkelosius is that prehistoric fish from the Devonian period with the really bulky skull, the bony skull. Now Nanotyrannus would be named in 1946 by Charles Gilmore and it would be reclassified in 1988. So there you have it you guys, a very similar to a Tyrannosaurus Rex or Nanotyrannus only 17 feet long, up to 6 feet high weighing just uh, about 2,000 pounds, running about 18 miles an hour. They have a skull that's just a little bit under 2 feet, 62 sharp serrated teeth, great eagle like vision, depth perception, sense of smell, powerful legs, larger arms than its body size, a long tail for stability, probably feathers, probably somewhat of a pack system, and they would have lived during the late Cretaceous period. So where do we rate our Nanotyrannus on the official fossil scale? We gave T-Rex a 9.3 on episode 1, but we know our Nanotyrannus isn't as powerful as an adult sized T-Rex, so where do we put it on the official fossil scale? One fossil for some of the weakest dinosaurs, and 10 fossils for some of the strongest dinosaurs. At the end of the day, I felt comfortable giving our Nano Tyrannus a 7.9. 7.9, you guys, on the official fossil scale of the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. There we have it everyone, a 7.9 for our Nano Tyrannus, nearly a point and a half lower than our Tyrannosaurus Rex, who we gave a 9.3 all the way back on episode one of the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. Now it's time for part two of our podcast today. It's time for the Dinosaur Detective. Now you guys, or my detectives, I mentioned that the holotype fossil skull of the Nano Tyrannus was found in the year of 1942. Remember, David Dunkel found the Nanotyrannus skull in the year of 1942. Well, the fossilized skull looked closely related to a Gorgosaurus fossil found in Canada. Now, this Gorgosaurus is another type of big theropod dinosaur, and the skull of the Nanotyrannus also lacked the bulkiness of a Tyrannosaurus rex skull. So, the skull was more narrow. So, in 1942, in 1946, the fossil was named a species of Gorgosaurus, who also happens to be a theropod dinosaur that falls into the Tyrannosaurids family. The Gorgosaurus is just another type of Tyrannosaurid. So our Nanotyrannus was named a type of Gorgosaurus back in 1946. So we will call this holotype dinosaur fossil of the Nanotyrannus, or the Gorgosaurus, its name is 7540. Remember that. The holotype fossil skull of our Nanotyrannus is named Fossil 75. 41. Now let's fast forward into 1988, 42 long years later, and a trio of paleontologists, including Dr. Phil Curry, examined the skull of 7541 and determined that the bones of the skull were fused together or attached. This is something that is seen in adults of many animals. When animals are babies, the skull isn't fully attached, so that the bones of the skull can continue continue to develop and continue to grow. So the fossil of 7541 was determined to be an adult. This made it one of the smallest tyrannosaurid adult skulls ever found. So the trio of paleontologists named it a new genus and species and they named it the Nanotyrannus. That was in 1988. Let's fast forward again 11 years later into 1999 right before the millennium. And another paleontologist used 3D computer scanning and looked closer at the skull of 7541 and found bone rings. Now these bone rings are like the rings of a tree's trunk and they help determine how many years old a creature or a tree is. So the bones in the 3D model of 7541 only showed around 11 years or 11 rings. This would mean that the fossil of 7541 was only a juvenile. Still, not everyone was convinced one way or another. 
Now in 2002, a few years later, a new fossil was found. This fossil was named Jane. Now we've got two fossils, 7541, and we've got a new fossil they named Jane. Well, everyone, Jane was found near the same dig site as fossil 7541. Now, Jane was also better preserved, meaning the fossils were a lot nicer. A lot more of the fossil was there. So, paleontologists also named Jane a juvenile T-Rex. So they believe Jane was for sure a juvenile T-Rex. Now since Jane was identified as a juvenile T-Rex and it looked really close to fossil 7541, many paleontologists began to flip on the side that Nan Nanotyrannus wasn't a different species, but rather a juvenile Tyrannosaurus Rex. But some answers still haven't been answered. Now let's complete, now let me explain completely for everyone. First, it's teeth. The fossil of 7541 has more teeth than an adult T-Rex. Now, some people say that an adult T-Rex lost teeth while it grew older. It didn't need as many teeth like when it was a kid, so the T-Rex simply just lost teeth. But other people look at another Tyrannosaurid family member, the Tarbosaurus. Now, this species, the Tarbosaurus, is found to have the same amount of teeth from a juvenile to an adult. So why why would the T-Rex lose its teeth? The teeth of 7541 also were flatter in shape than the Tyrannosaurus Rex. So there's number one. The teeth are still a little bit different. Next are its arms. Some people also point to the arms of the Nanotyrannus. An adult Nanotyrannus fossil arms are just as big as the adult T-Rex fossil. Does it make sense for the juvenile T-Rex to have adult sized arms when it's a kid? Does it really grow into its arms? Some animals do grow into their larger body parts. Humans, for instance, babies have larger heads than their body size when they're born, and this is simply because their brain glow, uh, grows slower than the rest of their bodies. So their heads are a little bit bigger at the time of birth. Now next, jaw bones. We also see a theory about a small pit in the lower jaw bone of the Nanotyrannus, and this is something we don't see in the T-Rex skulls. So that's another point. Lastly, the brain case, and this is the one I love the most. Dr. Larry Whitmer concluded in the year of 2009 that the brain case of 7541 was, quote, too different unquote, in shape from the brain case of an adult-sized T-Rex. Does this mean the T-Rex has a different shaped brain over time? Crazy, right? So those four arguments that I still haven't heard 100% factual answers for is why I think that it might not be an actual juvenile T-Rex. Lastly, in 2006, a new fossil was found on private land by private fossil collectors collectors. This fossil is named the dueling dinosaurs. And the fossil hunters say it's a nanotyrannus versus a triceratops. Now the collectors tried to auction the well-preserved fighting dinosaurs to a museum, but it wasn't sold. And now, sadly, the fossils sit in storage. So until the fossils can be prepared, cleaned, examined, and described by a museum paleontologist, we still don't know for sure about the species they call the Nanotyrannus. Now, what do you think, dinosaur detectives? Is the Nanotyrannus its own species, or is it simply just a juvenile T-Rex? We may need more fossils to truly know for sure, and I hope that I have laid out enough evidence for you to make your own decision. At one time, I agreed with both sides of the argument. Now, in my personal opinion, I believe everything points to a juvenile T-Rex until you look at the brain case. No animal living or extinct has the ability to alter the shape of their brain throughout their lives. I think it's its own genus and species, the Nanotyrannus. Now, you guys, a quick joke before we go and end today's podcast. Why can't a Nanotyrannus do push-ups? Why can't a Nanotyrannus do push-ups? 
because they've been extinct for 65 million years, duh! Come on guys, they're extinct. They've been wiped out. Thank you everyone for joining my uh, the start of season number four of the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. I just have so many amazing dinosaurs and creatures for us this season. Who will finish out on top and enter the fourth prehistoric cage match? We will find out together. Remember, my name is Dinosaur Ranger Anthony, the host of the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. And as always, keep digging for dinosaurs. Ah!